Pickaxe. Now, Michael Johnson, it occurs to Peter and I that you've never heard, let alone had, a blobby <laughs> biscuit before. It sounds like um, slang. Is it it's like sort of soggy act. biscuit? Yeah. <laughs> no, I promise. It's, it's nowhere near as disgusting as it sounds. <laughs> okay. I think between the three of us, we cover the, the full scale of blobby biscuit experience because you're not even aware of them. Ben, I think, is aware of them and has eaten them. And I oh, yeah. have only seen them in bakeries, <laughs> but never, never sampled Ooh. the delights. Mm. Oh, they're a bakery so, treat, not a supermarket thing. Ooh. No, well, I mean, there may have been a time when they were sold in supermarkets, but s- certainly I think local bakers sort of just went into business for themselves and mm. decided, you know what, we're going to roll the dice. We're going to make sort of a, a kind of, it's like a shortcake gingerbread shaped man. And then they cover it in pink icing and then put yellow dots on it and then a little face and it's called a blobby biscuit. And But it's... um. It's like shiny icing. It's not that nice, like, matte kind of, um, what do you call it, fondant icing. It's like Mm. shiny liquid icing that's been poured over the top and has then hardened. It's that kind. Oh, I'm Googling them now and they look absolutely beautiful. I love an ice Mm -hmm. biscuit. I would die for a Bobby biscuit. I don't know if they still do them. However, the thing that jogged my memory is when we were looking for a Blobby to go up on the, uh, the Twitter feed to let people know that we were beginning the recording, uh, someone was wearing a Mr. Blobby shirt, but when I looked closer, it said Blobby Biscuits and was just a photo of two sort of homemade Blobby Biscuits on it. Well, and I thought I would really actually like that shirt. Speaking uh, of uh, homemade Blobby Biscuits, look at this one I found. This is uh, it's an incredible <laughs> attempt. Hang on, it's coming. <laughs> oh my goodness me. Oh. <laughs> that's, oh, he's that's a star-shaped cookie. Where someone's just sort of thumbed Forced. icing onto yeah. it. <laughs> so and then slightly not panic look in its eyes as well. Ugh. The dots are weird as well, because in most of the blobby biscuits I can see, they're sort of yellow smarties, but those are strange, shiny liquid things. They look like little egg yolks, don't they? Mm. I found Very my odd. favorite version of the uh, blobby biscuit. It's a one with, yeah. I think, I don't know what went on, but they forgot to put on all the details. So it's just a pink cube so it's a knobby oh, that's bi- not uh, Mr. No. A knobby Mr. biscuit blobby. oh god <laughs> that just looks like spam oh god what? it like oh the edges of the icing kind of look like skin pe- like that's oh. dried on top oh god it's the, not the good blobby biscuit i've just sent there that's the blobby biscuit i know from my childhood which is very simple it's just pink all over a few mm. yellow splodges and sort of like a rough smiley face on the head area and i've not thought about blobby biscuits <laughs> or had them for uh, probably 20 years, but certainly it was a staple of uh, of one of the local bakeries in, in my mm-hmm. nearby town where I grew up. Um, I don't country. know if they do them anymore. I assume they do, though. I hope so. I mean, they're, they're I all think over they Google Images. Yeah. I'm adding, uh, I'm adding all of these to the thread for those oh, listening you. Know, oh, excellent. Who, who want Good. to see these ec- examples that we're referring to. I'm too yes, busy and continuing if you're... to look at Blobby Biscuits to do that. <laughs> Excuse me a minute, this is quite fun. <laughs> if you're not on Twitter, you can go to vidiotsofficial.com and our Twitter thread is pinned to the side so you can mm-hmm. see these images. The picture that you've sent, Ben, is tiny. <laughs> it's so small, isn't it? It looks massive on Google, but it's yeah. really small. Really, well, really small. Christ, I'm hungry now. Yeah, I could go for a nice Blobby Biscuit. Nice bloody biscuit, yeah. Well, welcome everyone to our Christmas themed episode of Poddy. It's this is the final episode of the year as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're just coming off the back of an incredible uh, not jingle jam charity stream yeah. uh, that we did. And we want to thank all of you for giving so incredibly generously. Uh, we were raising money for the Trussell Trust, which is a mm-hmm. food bank charity in the UK, raised over a thousand pounds. We did. Which is yeah. just mm-hmm. unbelievable. You were so generous and we had a lovely time. And that VOD is now on the YouTube channel. It is, yeah. I think we thanked you in the last episode because we recorded that knowing it would be going afterwards. But this is the real first episode after actually doing the stream. And uh, it was a wonderful time. Um, And not only did we raise lots of money for charity, but we had just a lovely community catch-up. And uh, it was, yeah, it's always nice to have those little streams and get everyone together live. I still have shattered bits of little britain dvd <laughs> all over oh, my yeah. just yeah <laughs> you just snapped it didn't you yeah uh. I, I should i need to hoover but i dread i'll be finding little bits of matt lucas and david williams for many years to come <laughs> well yeah that's our curse isn't it <laughs> truly escape them 
Um, but yeah, th thank you to everyone who came along to that. And also, big announcement, there is merch. We have new merchandise, yes. don't we, Michael Johnson? I need to say your activation phrase, don't you? I believe there's some kind of shop. You're damn right. Beep, boop, 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 boop. <laughs> um, <laughs> you are damn right, Ben Potter, if you head over to... Wow, it really just rolls off the tongue. It's, I don't even yeah, think now, it just happens. If you head over to vidiotsofficial.com and click on that lovely, enticing little shop button, you'll be greeted with a whole host of familiar favourites, but also a couple of new additions would you believe it um that on there is a gravy bear t-shirt oh, gravy bear. Yes. Gravy bear. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. a gravy lovely corduroy embroidered gravy bear hat and a cheeky little callback to our google vandalism days um with a feld hughes fun foods poddy it's meat face t t-shirt meat face t t-shirt and um, which also has a fun little print on the back so wow look at that two two prints for the price of well 1.1 t-shirts amazing yes um, yeah, we yeah. don't okay. know how long the Feldhoyers t-shirt is going to stay up um, <laughs> because we have pretty much just used their logo and altered it very slightly. So uh, yeah. get yours now. Uh, before we before get a cease and gone. desist. Yeah, absolutely. Also, I believe um, it may have been Richard Major on Twitter let us know that uh, Gravy Bay is now on Google Maps. Oh, my oh. God. And you can rate it and take photos of it. It's, I assume it's near Whitley Bay, which Whitley is... Whitley Bay. Oh, yes, Groby Bay. Yeah, it'll be fine. Uh, so, I, yeah, it should now be... We were sent a photo of it anyway. It's in our Twitter mentions. Oh, I don't um, think I saw that. Oh, so, yeah, yeah, it is there. Oh, wow. yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's presents Gravy Bay. Gravy it's just, Bay. Off, just off Whitley oh. Beach. Whitley Bay Beach. Just off Whitley... Oh, beautiful. Oh, and the, oh. <laughs> the image <laughs> of Gravy Bay is just our cap. <laughs> which I'm sure Brilliant. Google will immediately clamp down on if they so, see that. How did they claim? I'm trying to work out how that was claimed because Podiats presents Gravy Bay. The pin for it is just in the sea, so I don't know if that's been registered as a business or if Whitley Bay has been renamed. I'm not really sure. How yeah, it's like a pin out in the ocean. Maybe you can just pin anything anywhere. I don't know. It's got five five star reviews though, which is great. Yeah. So. Thank you, Bartek, Richard, Matt, Connor, and Samuel for your five-star reviews. I like oh, to okay. take myself here as a treat. Uh, ah, yes, Gravy Bay, absolutely incredible and extremely delicious are the comments. Yeah, you search people... Gravy Bay, it takes you right out there. Okay. Yeah. 24 hours, vidiotsofficial.com is the website. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Update from customers, a hat that's available there, but also on the website. Brilliant. <laughs> Amazing. Well, there we go. We're making our return to, to Google Maps, and I oh. love that our, our website address is right there. Yeah. They'll, never find, they'll never catch us. <laughs> yeah, this well, seems the like an is... original listing, so they can't come after us for this one. Yeah. Well, no, they can't, and also they certainly can't come after the three of us. I mean, if they're going to come after anyone, they're going to come after whichever mm -hmm. member of the community has done that. Uh, but the three of us, we didn't ask people to do this. No. Shrug. Just in case we ever get pulled into a court case, we should do a legal disclaimer now. Uh, we do not condone the actions of our viewer base. No. The opinions and everything of our viewer base do not represent Podiots, and we are in no way affiliated with any defamation or defacing of Google Maps. No, just, nope. thank you regardless of what our merch says, it's purely ironic. Don't don't hurt us, please. Uh, please. Corporate, corporate daddy, <laughs> please don't hurt us. I do like that Podiots presents Gravy Bay the pin thing that you can see on Google Maps is a pine tree, which I think means, you know, sort of beauty it's a park. spot or a park. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's registered park. as a as Oh, a it is park and garden. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's not on Google Maps, though. If you're not searching for it and you zoom out and then you zoom back in, it doesn't actually show up. Ooh. So right. I think you need to search for it <clears throat> manually. Okay. But if you just search, all I did was search Gravy Bay and it took me straight to it. It's like, that is the only Gravy Bay in the world right there. Amazing. Yeah, it's a park and garden is what it's registered as. God, yeah, so. if you just open an incognito tab uh, on Google, search Gravy Bay, it even comes up with a little like Google widget thing on the results page, on, on the web results page. You don't even have to be on Maps. It's a, it's a, scr a screenshot of the Google Maps pin, uh, and then next to it, a nice photograph of Whitley Bay. Oh, wait, no. The sea is brown. Someone's photoshopped a brown... <laughs> Richard Major has added an, an image of the seaside. I think it's AI generated, actually, uh, with brown liquid in the ocean. Here we go. That's what it looks mm. like. So we encourage all of you... So go to go go on Google Maps, search Gravy Bay, leave it a five star review, and we'll see if we can fuck up their algorithm so much 
that it start like Google starts to recommend it to people as a nearby <laughs> attraction. <laughs> Because on, yeah. it's got like fifty five star ratings. Oh yes, Gravy Bay. Well, we got to oh, go yeah. see this Gravy Bay. It must be, <laughs> must be <laughs> is amazing. That where gravy's invented. That's what I think. <laughs> Brian's prophecy is coming true. Yeah, do it oh. for Brian, everyone. Mm. Do it for Brian. Well, Brian. fantastic. Shall we crack on with our festive episode of Pod Let's. Yeah. Let's. Ho, ho, hello, everybody, and welcome to Poddy. It's the official, official. Vidiots Vidiots. Podcast. podcast. It's a conversational podcast where we take some questions from you at home and obey the law of the three ers, where everybody brings a, a thing, thing a a long long to talk, to talk about. about. I'm Ben. I'm Peter. And I'm Jolly Old Saint Mick. Oh, Mick. That good? Yeah, Mick. That's fine. Jolly Mick. Saint Mick. That's Saint great. Mick. Uh, and you can be... Peter Noel. <laughs> yeah, one. okay. It's French yeah, one. I'll take yeah. that. Yeah. And I don't, okay. I don't really know how mine will work. So. Uh, <laughs> i got to think about matter. it. Hang I'll on. just yeah. be an elf. I don't care. It's fine. Don't, it doesn't don't let the me. bends end. Oh, good. Oh, Christmas yeah. time. Yeah. The mm. darkness. We love it. <laughs> uh, this episode is releasing on the 23rd of December. So if you're listening to it before Christmas, we commend you. If you're listening to it after Christmas, it's too late. You've got to delete it now, unfortunately, legally. Uh, it's gone past its sell-by date, so uh, you can't have it anymore. Um, you which, said delete which your advent calendar. <laughs> yeah. That's it. <laughs> delete it. Just get rid of it. How are you guys doing? You good? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? Yeah, I'm all right, thank you. How are you, Mikey? Mikey? Doing good. Doing very good. It's the, the Christmas season is upon us, and... Uh, the extent of the Christmas decorations in this house at the minute is a string of rainbow lights that I bought two days ago. So oh. we're getting festive. No tree, yes. no nothing. We're keeping it simple. Nice. <laughs> nice. Christmas is in the heart, not in the plastic yeah. tree. Hey, if it works, it works, right? Mm-hmm. That's the most important thing. A little bit of admin before we get underway. This will be our final podcast of 2023. Uh, we'll be returning sort of mid-January 2024 gives us time to have a little break over the festive period and then get an episode recorded and edited and so on. So uh, we will see you on the other side. But you've got a whole episode before we disappear. And mm. some of you have taken that opportunity to support us via Pod Squad, whether that be a shout out for a loved one just a thank you to us, which is very appreciated, or a shout out for yourself. Uh, we love all of you. And if you want to join Pod Squad for the first episode of 2024, you can go to podiots.com. That will redirect you to a site. If you donate £3 or more, then you get a shout out at the beginning and the end of the podcast. And we'll super love you forever and ever and ever. Mikey, would you like to kick off the final Pod Squad of 2023? We begin with Mr. Macca. Caroline, please, I will change. Oh, no, <laughs> not a Christmas hey, time. Maybe next year they'll get back together. This could be yeah. it. This could this be could, the year. I, th I think 2024 is going to be a good year for Caroline. Um, we continue with the generous good Stegosaurus. And they say, hey, lads, just wanted to say thank you for all the laughs over the years and wanted to wish you all a very happy Christmas. Thank happy Christmas. Also, any chance I can take Mikey out in my car, the anime one in the Discord, to see what kind of strange noises he can make? <laughs> I'm going to need some context. Yeah. What's going on here? Uh, um, someone in the Discord, I saw it earlier today actually, has um, a, a quite nice BMW, but with a anime girl waifu rap on it. Oh, <laughs> which, okay. Which, which chat is it in? Oh, I, oh wait, hold on. I can't it remember. Body? It's in here somewhere. Health and well-being. <laughs> Health and well-being. All right. Health and well-being. Oh, my God. It's got boobies oh. and everything. <laughs> That's, look, at, look at that. Wow. <laughs> yes. I would, you I would make my Christmas dreams come true. Mikey. <laughs> make yes. him scream. <laughs> make him scream. Lovely. So, yeah, good Stegosaurus. Generous not only with their donation, but also in their offerings. Thank you very much. We continue yes. with, I'm Ben. I'm Peter and I'm Michael. <laughs> Stomach Hang on, you're crampus. Only one of those things you like. Hey, whoa, li hey, lies. Come on, don't put words yeah. in my mouth, donators. Stomach Krampus. Very good. <laughs> Michael Fletcher, bum no. slurper. No. Michael Wrong. Felcher, bum mm. slurper. You're very good yeah. at reading, Ben. I, I'm glad <laughs> hey, you're around. You can't get the disgusting ones past me. <laughs> 
stimulated crocodile clits. Lovely. Ooh. Mm. Specky Ooh. Becky. Michael comes on nuts. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> the generous, you know it's all about Dakum. And they say, Merry Crimble, boys or girls or others. Thanks for another year of wonderful unhinged madness. Sending chrism love to all. Or y'all and all the people, cats, ferrets, dogs, crows, seagulls, pigeons, whatever else in the Warris clan. Any chance of meeting under the mistletoe? Ooh. 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 Maybe. You'll see if you get lucky. Put thank you your much. Thank you, thank you. Put your Chris Mussy into it. <laughs> Kirby Herdy, Herpy Derpy, and Human Semen Festive Bake. Fantastic, Ooh, thank another you. Another challenging one. Crikey. Mm. Um, it continues with D's nuts roasting on an open fire, presumably. They ran out of characters, but it was an, an open F. A holy jolly Mr. Black. Uh, the cum was a bit much for me. Did we do a cum-related thing last? Oh, I think one? I just told people not to do cum ones anymore. Oh, okay. Oh, right. and, Fair yeah, enough. Okay. The naughty... Yeah. Cool Inevitably, for the lot, yeah. there we, we are. Now got yeah. extra cum ones. Uh, step <laughs> into... <laughs> Step into fudge bucket. Good. Uh, Don Echo Seven. Mister Blobby has a throbby. C D and oh C D another C D uh, and C D's nuts. Very good. Uh, Wallace and Grom nuts. Merry <laughs> Chris nuts. Podiats presents presents. So good. Prince Beef Cakes, who is very generous and says, Merry Fudge Bucket to all and to all a good fudge bucket. <laughs> Love you, <laughs> Keys Keys. Uh, Chris, Mas- Chris Maddiots, uh, Steven Skodes, and Flat Armed Maud. And finally, we've got Noel Gave Me Blob Spiders. <laughs> <laughs> Steven Skodes again. Lord Fudge Bucket of Itch. Uh, thank you very much, Lord Fudge Bucketovich. Doctor Goblin, Joan Christmas, Papua. Hang on. What? Oh, Papu. What? I'm trying to work. The, uh, the camel case says Papu Gas, Tiny Head, Nice Bum. Yeah, Papu Papu Gas. Pa- Papu Gas, Tiny Head, Nice Bum. What's that, Mikey? Absolutely no idea. Uh, Papu oh, okay. Gas is a baby pug, isn't it? Oh, it yeah, was it. Or a daddy pug, maybe. A daddy oh. pug is a papoogus. Yeah. That's a really? Yeah. No. No, he's making it up. <laughs> I don't I don't know what it is. <laughs> what uh, is Finn it? Tristam, come at Finn Tristam, come at the pog, Torso Evans, the obscenely generous extra extra fifties worth of Crimbo, Whoa. who said thank you boys for making me laugh every day. Had to donate after binging all of your hilarious content. Introduced to me by my best bud, James at Corrosion Audio. We know him. We know that one. Please wish him and yourselves a very Merry Christmas from me, Maud. Keys, keys. Oh, thank Wait, you very much, Maud. Wait, is this flat-armed Maud? Maud flat-armed Maud potentially has earlier. come back. Yeah. Thank you so much, and Merry Christmas to you and Corrosion Audio. Thank you, mm, guys. Thank you very much. Merry Christmas. We've also got the very generous Brian Butterfield. Whoa! Oh, my God! Who said, It's Podiat's Day, so we could eat whatever we want. <laughs> Pizza, birthday pie, pints of cream, pork cylinders, potato... Grids. I thought it said gruds then. That's not right. <laughs> Potato grids, large backs, sandwich casserole, chocolate quail eggs, garlic pudding, fluffy ruffs, pasta pillows, quiches Lorraine, bob 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 bonds. Delicious. Oh, what about my 20 cheese omelette? Unfortunately, oh. we haven't been good enough for a 20 cheese omelette. <laughs> Maybe next time. And we also have naked n- naturist Harry Gooch. Lovely. <laughs> And Czechoslovakia, a classic. A Thank classic. you so much. <laughs> that is your pod squad for this week, uh, for this year. Mm, Thank you God. guys so, so much for all of your support. We really yes. appreciate it. Um, do you guys have a favourite out of those? Uh, I laughed the most at Noel gave me blob spiders. Um, <laughs> not a festive one, but I did like Wallace and Grom nuts. <laughs> oh, I'm also going to have to go for a nuts one. I'm going to go for D's nuts roasting on an open <laughs> That is very good as well, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Thank you as well. I I know Ben's just thanked everyone for all of your donations over the year, but especially to those, you know, those those quiet little regular ones who are always giving three pounds every month, you know, Mm. uh, every every fortnight, in fact. Um, You know, there are plenty of you, and that adds up, and it takes you to far more than what we can, uh, what we label as the very generous. So a lot Mm. of you have been the very very generous this year, but you've just spread it across. 
the whole time, uh, and that's mm. much appreciated. Thank you all Absolutely. very much. For the 100%. price of, you could sponsor a donkey with that money, but instead no, you could sponsor us. <laughs> no, you couldn't. Peter would know, right? You've, oh, you've what? Got, you've got donkey sponsorships on, on the go, or you have in the past. Yeah, well, I was saying, no, you couldn't, because I don't want people getting any fancy <laughs> ideas about giving money to donkeys instead of oh, us. Wow. Well, you, yeah, you Peter Austin says, fuck the donkeys. <laughs> but we donkeys do can't eat dominoes, but we can. <laughs> That's true. Uh, but we do sponsor a donkey, but it's gifted to us every year. So oh, uh, that's nice. I don't even What's have to pay for it. Sorry? What's your donkey called? He's called Harbin. 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 Oh, yeah. That's mm. lovely. That's really nice. You ever thought of getting him in Domino's? Um, I don't know if... I might get done for animal cruelty if I give a Domino's to Harbin. Oh. I mean, it isn't legally food, is it? So, no, well, exactly. It poisons us every time we have yeah. it. So much so that my friends say, are you sure you're not just lactose intolerant? I'm like, no, I love cheese. <laughs> Domino's is just bad. Yeah. <laughs> but I can't Even stop Even if I have it, it without the cheese, it doesn't do great things to me. So I don't yeah. think it's just the cheese. It's, mm. it's aggressively violent on the plumbing. It looks like food. It smells like food. It tastes like food. But it's not food. It's very <laughs> deceptive. Uh, wonderful. Thank you so much, Pod Squad. A good Thank Stegosaurus you. on the Discord, Mikey, would like to know if you still have your shreddies uh, so he doesn't get gassed while you're being drifted about. <laughs> oh, yeah. Stunts in the anime car. Yeah, I do. They live amongst all my other underpants, despite the fact I've not worn them since the video. But I, okay. I put them in there just in case. Just in case. They have to be I've sealed him... in, in a lead lined case after that video. <laughs> <laughs> I've told him that uh, that you do still have them, so I'll leave it up to you guys to hash out the details yeah, on yeah, that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, as always, we have six things to present to you lot today. Uh, we've all brought our own thing along. I believe, have you guys uh, brought a festive adjacent thing? Oh, crap, yes. it's Christmas. No, sorry, I'm, I'm just kidding. Yeah, I got festive. You, I believed you then. <laughs> For a I second. Did. Bloody hell. And I we've also that. got some festive adjacent things suggested by you, the wonderful audience. We usually ask for things on the uh, the week leading up to our recording, so you can keep an eye on our Twitter for prompts for that. Uh, this week, I would like Michael Johnson to kick us off with his uh, listener slash viewer related thing. By the way, before you before you do it, Mikey, you can go to our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash video, official, and watch us record it. Uh, because the video version now features our faces. Just in case that slipped you by, you can see us recording this rather than just listen. Oh my God, magic. Look, what am I holding in my hand? Uh, I don't know. Ooh, I can't see it. View, the we can't see it. Finder. You guys <laughs> can. Wow. Which direction are you fun. in? Are you above me? Are you are you below me? Are you to my right? I don't, I don't know where you are. I don't know. It could be anywhere. Ah. <laughs> Actually, I can't remember what that is. Anyway, yeah. that's, that's for the viewers at home to find out. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. Uh, we have a thing kindly uh, submitted by The Impressionist at The Impressionist on Twitter. And do, do, do let me pull it up. This is a BBC News article from the region of Northamptonshire in particular. Mm. Um, but I don't think this has any bearing on Northamptonshire. Although maybe it will. We'll find out. The headline reads, Whamageddon. DJ sorry for playing Last Christmas by Wham. Uh, oh, no. Do either of you partake in the Wham? Is it what is the game called Whamageddon? Or yeah, it, yeah, I've never heard of this before. Really? Yeah, I've never heard it's, of Whamageddon before. I hadn't heard of it before, and then Amy told me this this story, and I was like, "What is what are you talking about?" And she's like, "Yeah, DJs had to apologise." I was like, well, "Okay," but uh, yeah, I wasn't aware before this year. That's it. I think it's silly that they have to apologise because surely, like the point of Whamageddon is like it's everywhere. So it's see mm. how long you can it's go without hearing game, it. Isn't it? As we'll yeah. learn when you. If read no the one's article. playing, if no one's playing the song on the radio, then there's no stakes to it. If, don't blame the DJs. They're just making Whamageddon what it is. Yeah. Uh, this just reminds me of uh, one of my dad's favourite sayings: "Is uh, when it's hot outside." Um, he says it's a bit George Michael. I'm like what? Because it's Wham. In his oh, Jesus, accent. that is so northeast. Yeah. It's, a, it's a bit what? It's Geet Wham. It's Geet Wham like. <laughs> Robert so for George those, Michael. So for those who uh, have no idea what Whamageddon is, Mikey, uh, well, well, we're going to find out about it now, well, aren't we? Let's let's find out. Yeah. Mm. Um, the there's a lovely picture of of George Michael and someone else who I don't quite rec recognise. He's the other Wham. The, yeah, other, the one, other one, yeah. <laughs> the lesser known Wham brother, Harold Wham. <laughs> uh, 
uh, the subtitle to which reads, The game, Whamageddon, sees people try to avoid the Wham hit last Christmas. So yeah, yeah, the game is go as long as you can without hearing, Last Christmas, I gave oh, you my ice. Oh, oh, oh. I see him singing it, doesn't count. I think that not. means people are safe, yeah. Yeah. Okay, good, good. Uh, a, football, a football stadium DJ has apologised for playing Last Christmas by Wham, potentially knocking more than 7,000 7, people out of the cult game Whamageddon. No. I wonder if there was like an audible groan that rolled through the uh, <laughs> stadium. <there. laughs> Players try to avoid George Michael and Andrew Ridgely's 1984 hit for as long as possible before Christmas Eve and are eliminated once they hear it. Mm. Matt Facer, DJ at Northampton Town, was criticised for playing at the home game against Portsmouth on the 2nd of December. I never knew people took it so seriously, he said. Christ, Whamageddon started about 10 years ago. So wow. this has been going on I've for a while. avoid it all this time. Mm. You, you played <laughs> Whamageddon, Whamageddon. Which is a uh, avoid. Well, yeah, that's the thing. Now I know what it is. I'm, I'm, I'm literally burdened and cursed with this knowledge because previously I was like, it did, it didn't even enter my thoughts. Like not, yeah. as, not at all. And now I'll always be aware of it. Mm-hmm. Every, t- every, sh- every trip to Tesco will be fraught with fear of what song will they play over the PA. What could happen? I could die. Could... Um, it how? Oh wow! So the game now has a set of rules, a dedicated website, and a merchandise. I will. Have a quick scroll through the website at the end of the article just to see what's going on. Uh, oh, the rules we, are. Wow. We, uh, the game's rules state, while we can't stop you from deliberately sending your friends to <laughs> Whamhalla. Very good. Uh, I do like the, Whamhalla. That's really good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, big into that. The intention is that it is a survival game, not a battle royale. I like it. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Facer, known as DJ Matty, played the song during halftime in the League One Clash at Six Fields, attended by 7,215 people. I gave it a spin, thinking it would be quite funny to wipe out 7,000 people who couldn't avoid it, but oh. clearly... Oh, so he's it knowingly. Sorry. It's intentional. What a bastard. Did it on God, purpose. Yeah. Bastard, man. Uh, but clearly it wasn't funny, he said. I had a bit of an ins- insult on Twitter light-hearted saying it was not a nice thing to do and apparently <laughs> that was quite tame to what's being said in the stadium good god, oh god. so i officially apologize to everybody whose christmas i've ruined <laughs> jesus ruined it cheers son's crying nice one yeah he has promised not to play the song during the home game against fleetwood town to avoid upsetting fans on the lancashire side he told BBC Radio Northampton, I can take on the chin with my home fans in Portsmouth, but I don't think I'll be playing it again. I think it's a shame people in professions like mine can't play Wham! until late December, but it's a game and we all have to jump on board. Last Christmas reached, num- uh, Last Christmas reached number two on its release, finally reaching the top spot on January 1st, 2021. Christ, that was a late bloomer. But... Uh, well done, Wham. Well done, George Michael. I hope you're doing well. But yeah, the, I, 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 hang I, on. <laughs> so you do know he's dead, right? Is he? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh. Yeah. That was very you... partridge of you. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> when did he die? Well. What's he up to these days? I hope, I hope George Michael's doing all right. I, th- I thought you were. I, I thought it was intentional. I didn't even blink when you. <laughs> but then when you when Ben asked you, I was like, oh, okay. Uh oh. And the other guy, Andrew Ridgely. I don't know if he's still alive, but also well done to him for getting to Christmas number one. He did yeah. Yeah. Well done. Well done. Uh, would you like a quick squeeze at the rules for Whamageddon? I'd sure. love to. Uh, first rule. Last as long as possible without hearing last Christmas. Number two. Starts on December 1st and finishes at the end of... Twen- on, on December 24th. Third rule. the Only the original version applies. Enjoy the shit out of remixes and covers. Um, rule number four. You're out as soon as you recognise the song. Bonus rule. Post on social media with the Whamageddon hashtag when you get hit. Ooh. Mm. Uh and yeah, apparently there's, there's, there's communities, they've got merch, I don't know who's buying it, but it's out there if you want it. Um, so yeah, amazing. Mm. Well, I usually forget about Whamageddon, even when I'm like reminded of it every year, I'll hear Last Christmas, but it won't register in my brain that I'm not supposed to be hearing that. So I get to sleep easily at night, not in fear <laughs> of George Michael's ghost haunting me. Oh, I, uh, 
whenever I hear the word wham or think about wham, I think about the fact that when George Michael's uh, George Michael crashed his cra- hello when George Michael crashed his car or I think it was a big four by four into a shop. Um, the next day, someone came back and um, graffitied the word wham on the hole that he had made <laughs> where he crashed into the shop. Which is, uh, oh, dear. A lot of that shop doesn't look very well made, does it? It's a lot of wood. Yeah, it's just made of wood. It's a very yellow shop. It looks like someone's um, like taken the scrap metal from the Only Fools and Horses three-wheel car and yeah. made it into a shop. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'll add the, uh, the photo to the thread, but I'm sure you'll all find it at home. <laughs> Excellent. Well, thank you very much for that thing, Michael Johnson. Thank we are you. now going to pass over to Peter Austin and his own thing, what he has brought from home. Wow. Well, um, I've got a little confession to make, actually. Um, when I was a boy of about, I don't know, 13, 14. Your father uh, we didn't were... take you into the city, did he? To see a marching, marching band. band. Yeah, he did, actually. But that's not what I'm confessing to oh, here and so. now. Okay. Um, I was um, invited around to ha- spend Christmas at some family friends uh, who um, we, uh, we we would always have Christmas at home. Um, but then this one year, we we're going to stay with these friends who were, they were a lot of fun. Uh, they were like a bit older than my parents and they always used to organize various like games and like stuff that sometimes it was it would be like challenges that like last the whole time that you're there and like there's there was always like fun happening um, and one thing they did was they asked everyone to bring along i can't remember what the exact sort of criteria were but like just just bring something along to kind of read or recite to the room uh relating to christmas it could be like a christmas poem or a like a stuff I, that, I guess poems. yeah I, I think it was basically bring a thing along to talk about so it might oh. have been like oh here's the worst christmas that ever happened or here's chocolate grandma or you know something like that um <laughs> chocolate grandma and it could be something that you wrote yourself so you could write your own poem for example or or do podiats merry podiats um and i brought a thing along and I pretended I had written it. Um, <gasps> Peter, naughty boy. Did you did you win? No, fortunately. Oh, okay. Um, Got thank God. Guilt. They really liked it though. They all thought it was really good. Um, and I don't know how they thought that this was written in my voice as a 14, 13, 14 year old boy. Um, but I found it um, still on the internet where I took it from. Um, wow. This is from like. Years and years ago, I think this has been floating around the internet since like probably the late nineties or something. Um, it w- will have been one of those things people were forwarding as emails uh, back in the day. But I'm going to read it to you. Uh, you may even have come across this in the past, but it's called "The Physics of Santa Claus." Ooh. Oh, by Peter Austin. By Peter Aged. Austin. How old were you at the time? Thirteen, maybe. <laughs> Aged thirteen. Aged thirteen, maybe a bit younger. But uh, here we go. Um, this intro I I didn't copy but I'll read it anyway I'll read the whole thing so this is from James Crooks or James Crocks no James C. Rocks actually Um, do you you want to take this I mean this is an opportunity for you to sort of atone and maybe feel a little less guilty about stealing his work do you want to take a moment to apologise to James Crocks well I don't think this Did is James steal it either. as well? But I think he oh. openly says that this is not... Um, oh, yeah, he says, bear in mind, this was first published way back before the millennium, so some of the figures are a little dated. But oh. he, he admits it's not his either. This is just one place I found where it had been reproduced. Oh, but he okay. at least doesn't pretend it's his. So, so he's uh, a thief as well. Yeah. So me and James, we're st- we've, we've stolen this. Um, but anyway, here we go. I'll read James's intro as well as uh, the full thing. The Physics of Santa Claus... I'm a geek, an atheist, and somewhat pro-science, but I still love Christmas. So is it any surprise that I love humorous pieces like this one? It's arguably one of my all-time favourite pieces of Christmas fun. Bear in mind this was first published way back before the millennium, so some of the figures are a little dated. For example, there are probably around two and a half billion children in the world today compared to a mere two billion back then. Let us Mm. begin. Um... Sorry, can I just did he say I'm somewhat pro science? <laughs> yeah, somewhat pro science. Yeah, <laughs> still a bit iffy on the numbers. You know, uh, it's also worth noting that I think even James himself probably wrote this on his blog 
many years ago. So there are probably more than uh, uh, two and a half billion children in the world. Which I'll is find out how about. many while you read it. Okay, but this is it. So this is late 90s figures. On or around Christmas, Santa delivers presents to all the good children of the world. Like all claims, this needs to be rationally examined. No known species of reindeer can fly, but there are well over a million species of living organisms yet to be classified. And while most of these are insects and germs, this does not completely rule out flying reindeer, which only Santa has ever seen. Mm-hmm. It continues. That's the first point. Number two. There are 2 billion children, persons under 18, in the world. But since Santa doesn't appear to handle most Hindu, Buddhist Mus- or Muslim children, that reduces the workload to around 15% of the total, which is 378 million according to the Population Reference Bureau. Remember, I wrote this at age 13. <laughs> you did. You did a lot of research, didn't you? I did, so yeah. Weeks in the library. Um, at an average census rate of 3.5 children per household, that's uh, that comes out as 91.8 million homes that have children. Uh, one presumes that there is there's at least one good child in each home who will be receiving <laughs> presents. Um, number three, Santa has 31 hours of Christmas to work with thanks to the different time zones and the rotation of the Earth, assuming he travels east to west, which seems logical. This works out to... 822.6 visits per second. That is Whoa. to say that for each Christian or, or associated household with good children, Santa has one thousandth of a second to park, hop out of the sleigh, jump down the chimney, fill the stockings, distribute distribute the remaining presents under the tree, eat whatever snacks have been left, get back up the chimney, get back into the sleigh and move on to the next house. Assuming that each of these 91.8 million stops are evenly distributed around the world, which of course we know to be false, but for the purposes of our calculations we will accept, we are now talking about 0.78... What? What? Hang on, that doesn't look right. We're now talking your about numbers, point... Peter, you should know them like the back oh, of your no, head. Oh, no, yeah, I should do, yeah. Uh, yeah, we're now talking about 0.78 miles per household. So that's between each household he has to visit. Ah. Uh, which is a total trip of 75 and a half million miles, Whoa. not counting stops to do what most of us must do at least once every 31 hours, plus feeding, etc. Um, this means that Santa's sleigh is, I think that means feeding the reindeer, but it doesn't say oh. so. Uh, this means that Santa's sleigh is moving at 650 miles per second. That's Oof. 3,000 times the speed of sound. For purposes of comparison, the fastest man-made vehicle on Earth, the Ulysses space probe, moves at approximately, uh, sorry, epoxy to uh, 27.4 miles per second, uh, and a conventional reindeer can run at at maximum 15 miles per hour. So <laughs> Rubbish. Number four. Hard enough here. The payload on the sleigh adds another interesting element. Assuming that each child gets nothing more than a medium-sized Lego set, which weighs two pounds, the sleigh is carrying 321,300 tons, not counting Santa, who is invariably described as overweight. Oh, wow. (laughs) As though that makes a difference. On land, conventional reindeer can pull no more than 300 uh, pounds. Even granting that flying reindeer could perhaps pull 10 times the normal amount, we cannot do the job with 8 or even 9 reindeer. We need 214,200 reindeer. This increases the payload, though, and not even counting the weight of the sleigh, to 353,430 tonnes. Again, for comparison, this is four times the weight of the cruise ship Queen Elizabeth II. I've heard that every Macy breeding season, this. Santa flies the, the sex helicopter over the deer so he can up his numbers yes. to get around uh, <laughs> fast enough. Yeah. Uh, so we finish now. I've remembered. I've remembered. I did write part of this, which is obviously not on James's website. I, I worked out some of it all, my, all by myself. So I'll tell you what I worked well out after this. But the final bit of the physics comes out as 353,000 tonnes traveling at 650 miles per second creates enormous air resistance. This will heat the reindeer up in the same fashion as a spacecraft re-entering the Earth's atmosphere. The lead pair of reindeer will absorb 14.3 quintillion joules of energy. Oh my god. 
God. It per like second. Each. Whoa. Oh, my God. That <laughs> explains Rudolph's red nose. My God. It mm. does. In short, they will burst into flame almost instantaneously, exposing the reindeer behind them and creating deafening sonic booms in their wake. The entire <laughs> reindeer team will be vaporized within 4.26 thousandth of, thousandths of a second. Santa, meanwhile, will be subject to acceleration forces 17,500 times greater than gravity. A 250-pound Santa, which seems ludicrously slim, it says, would be pinned to the back of his sleigh by 4,315,015 pounds of force. In conclusion, if Santa ever did deliver presents on Christmas Eve, he's dead now, it says. (laughs) Lovely. He Um, literally took off and died within a second. Yeah, yeah. Less than a second, the entire thing burst into flames. Um, But I have remembered, I thought, you know what, that might not be long enough. That might not be enough. So what I did is I sat down and worked out uh, how much, how many calories Santa takes on if he eats, for example, one mince pie and one glass of milk or sherry or something uh, for every household. And... uh, how many uh, carrots Rudolph has to eat and what that would do to him. But obviously I don't have those figures in front of me because uh, we're talking 20 years ago now. Well, not quite, but yeah, Mm. nearly. (laughs) But there you go. Oh my god! I mean, that's how he keeps his energy up. That's yeah. Maybe yeah. that's he, 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 that 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 layer of lard. He starts off the night layers like just ginormous, and as it burns through, he's got enough stock there that it burns yeah. through, revealing a lovely slim Santa at the end of the night, and that's how leaving he it. the delicious smell of sort of crispy fat in his wake. Mm, mm. Yummy reindeer jerky, anyway. I mean, there's no, Ooh. there's nothing left, is there? There's it's no just, jerky. There's no, it's just atoms, just uh, in the wind. <laughs> Dust. Dust. Wow. So there we go. I remembered. I, I wasn't. I didn't completely plagiarize, but I mostly plagiarized as a child. Okay. Amazing. Thank you Whatever. very much, Peter. Thank you for taking us down that journey, Peter. Uh, d- I've You're got welcome. a little fact here. As of 2023, the estimated global population of children defined as individuals under the age of 18 is approximately 1.9 billion, according Ooh. to the United Nations Children Fund, UNICEF. Oh. Okay. Very consistent. Yeah. It's gone down. <laughs> it has. Apparently. It has. Aging Which population. I don't know. Mm. People aren't having kids because the world's fucked. Uh, yeah. It could be anything. Uh, wonderful. Well, I have a viewer slash listener submitted thing. Are you guys ready to hear it? Yes. yes. Thank you to Jareth Button at Emo Hawk and also Connor Bennett at C Bennett underscore 12 on Twitter. Mm. This new story comes courtesy of Sky News and the headline reads... Tesco recalls Christmas stuffing because it may contain moths. Oh, Oh God. God. (laughs) No. Moths. The supermarket chain stresses the apple and cranberry stuffing mix may be unfit for human consumption and apologises to customers. First horses and now moths. (laughs) What's going on here, Tesco? More dust. More edible dust. Mm, Delicious dust. That's... This is actually news that broke uh, today at the time wow. of recording <laughs> at, wow, at half, half one on the 14th of December. Uh, Tesco is recalling a Christmas stuffing product for context for people outside the UK. And just in case you don't know, Tesco is, is the biggest supermarket chain in the UK. It does then go on to say that in the article, but I've now said it. Tesco is recalling a Christmas stuffing product because it might contain moths. The supermarket chain said the warning applied to Tesco finest apple... That's right. Feed the rich the moths. (laughs) The supermarket chain said the warning applied to Tesco finest apple and cranberry stuffing mix, 130 grams, with the best before date ending September 2024. We are recalling a single batch of Tesco Finest Apple and Cranberry Stuffing Mix due to the the possible presence of moths, which makes the product unfit for human consumption, the official recall notice said. In the warning issued through the Food Standards Agency, the retailer said anyone who had bought the affected stuffing should not consume this product. Do you guys want a screenshot of the stuffing? Just so we can do our due diligence and... And share, you know, let people yeah. know on Twitter, like, don't buy this if you haven't. Are yes. there moths in it? Return- oh, well, see. You can't see the, the moths the in that one. Oh. <laughs> Customers are advised to return the product to a branch of the supermarket where they will be given a refund. No receipt is required. Tesco apologizes to our customers for any inconvenience caused, the statement added. 
Cranberry has become a staple of traditional Christmas dinners, having first become popular as part of Thanksgiving feasts in the US. The recall notice included no explanation as to how moths may have come to be present in the stuffing, but Tesco has been contacted for, for comment, and we may actually have more news by the time uh, this so. episode drops. But as it stands, all we know is that somehow moths might have got in posh stuffing. Laurel. I've uh, I've gone to Google Images in case anyone's like posted because surely the the first this must have been reported because someone found a moth in their stuffing, right? Yeah, maybe right? you would have thought. No, apparently no image on social media is going around. Um, Damn it! No. Also, surely like what like it's like it can't just be a person found one moth in the thing. Like it has to be mm. many people finding moths because like one moth is like ah that's that's just a manufacturing manufacturing error. That's fine. But lots of moths to then lead to a recall. My God, and no one's posted evidence. Maybe it's like little tiny bits of ground up moth in your stuffing, which mm. is most likely. But how did That's they figure it out? God, I want the details. I want to know everything about this. Mm-hmm. Me I'm too. surprised, not that I would want to eat a moth, but in a way I'm surprised <laughs> that like cooking mothy stuffing would like... <laughs> That it would still be unfit for human consumption. There's nothing not to suggesting... moths, really, is there? No. no. I mean, again, I'm not suggesting that they should have gone, eh, well, yeah, it's got moths in it, but, you know, well, we won't like let anyone know. Like, they still should have done a product recall either way. But to actually say it may make the food unfit for human consumption, that might not necessarily... I don't know if that rings true to me, that that it would do you any harm, but... I don't know. Sometimes little bugs have parasites in them that can kill you. Like that guy who ate a slug and died. Oh, yeah. yeah. Very true. Um, and also, I think if people were given the choice, they probably wouldn't want to eat moths. No. Um, or have, probably. you know, moth seasoning on their food. <laughs> we'll all we'll be eating moths. moths one day, though. You know, in a, in, in a couple of decades, we'll be on uh, crickets and stuff. Delicious. I can't yeah. wait to be dead. Um, mm. But there we are. That is my listener submitted thing. Michael Johnson... Do you have your own thing? I do indeed. And I come with a tale of a Christmas bastard. Oh, oh all right. All rude. right. Um, this, well, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, it's a Christmas bastard. That's all the context you need as we roll into this. Um, this is fr- uh, from an article on History Extra, the website, and it was written by a lovely Alex Palmer. Hmm. And this is the true tale of... I wouldn't say the worst, the worst Christmas man ever, but definitely worse than most. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Every year throughout the early 1900s, a growing mountain of Santa letters ended up at post offices across America. Thanks to a change in post office department policy in 1911, these letters began to be answered by charity groups approved by the local postmaster. But in New York City, the largest city in the country, Santa was nowhere to be found. (gasps) Mailmen disowned Santa, read the headlines. Two years went by with New York City's Santa letters being ignored. And as the days of December 1913 ticked away, it began to look like Santa would once again be a no-show. But on the 8th of December, New York City's postmaster, Edward M. Morgan, received a call about a clever customs broker with a carefully conceived system for receiving, verifying, and responding to children's Christmas wishes. Hastily, I think he was a bit panicked. I don't know why the postmaster hadn't bothered to look into anyone thus far, but I think when someone comes along on the 8th of December promising to go through a big sack of children's letters... Um, He was just quite eager to get him on and said, yep, sure, you can have the job. And as a result, New York City now had a Santa Claus. Mm. Mm. However, it would turn out that the city had got more than it bargained for. John Duval Gluck Jr. Gluck's a good last name. I like that. Gluck. Gluck. Mm. Gluck. 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 A bachelor with no children of his own. While Gluck's imagination and abundant energy added a sense of fancy to his day-to-day life, it also created restlessness in him and a hunger to do something greater with his life. Gluck's idea? The Santa Claus Association. And it meant that New Yorkers of any means could take a letter, or 100 of them if they liked, and personally see that the child received his or her gift. The donors paid for the gifts themselves, and Gluck's uh, uh, association basically act as a means of contacting sad Christmas children with 
philanthropists and people who want to help the sad Christmas children, which is quite sweet. I think mm. it's a very nice. It, imagine writing a letter to Santa and then at like your your parents don't even know, and suddenly, oh my God, the Christmas gift is here. Santa's real, and the magic will never die mm. until it does. Okay. <laughs> um, donors came from all walks of life, and uh, they all con- contributed to the efforts. Volunteers from the city's elite societies offered their time to help open, sort, and respond to the thousands of letters sent by the children of New York. It answered 28,000 children in the group's first year. Wow. That is quite, whoa, Christ almighty. And the Santa Claus Association soon became an institution in early 20th century New York City. It's all quite sweet and wholesome so far. Oh, mm-hmm. good, good on, good, good on, good on you, Gluck. Yeah, where's this bastard? That's what I want to know. <laughs> oh, it comes, don't you worry. <laughs> oh, no. The group's work continued for another decade and a half, and each year, Gluck's ambitions grew. He started branches of the Santa Association in other cities. Mm-hmm. He tapped celebrities like John Barrymore and Mary Pickford to help promote the cause, and even announced plans for a grand Santa Claus building to be constructed wow. in the middle of Manhattan. <laughs> God. Uh, Gluck was dreaming big, my word. I think um, I, th- I think maybe part of the article I, I edited are removed, but I think a lot of his money kind of came from the post office itself as well to kind of help run things. So, like, while also getting money from nice, lovely people who donated the money, he also took money from the post office to help run this operation so he had his fingers well his pockets were quite full from many sources meanwhile like everyone in new york is not receiving any mail it's like <laughs> there, are, there are no post vans uh, all the post men and women aren't getting paid enough or whatever we had to but construct gluck's santa claus building santa there's Tower, no money for yeah. anything else <laughs> made of real <What>? candy <laughs> lick the walls mm. <laughs> yummy <laughs> But as the number of answered letters increased, so did Gluck's request for funds. First, he asked for a few dollars to cover all the two-cent stamps required. Fair, fair, fair request. Then he began asking for hundreds of dollars to pay for the gifts themselves. And then hundreds of thousands of dollars to fund the construction of the Santa Claus building. Oh my God. Come on, come on, Gluck. Go on, keep, keep your ambitions real. Come on, uh, dream small, dream small. Few people asked questions about where exactly all these funds were going because, you know, few figures garner as much trust as jolly old St. Nick. Uh, but not everyone was so easily excited by this newfound Santa Claus. Oh. New York City's Commissioner of Public Welfare made it his mission to clean up Gotham's unregulated charities. And by 1927, he had Gluck in his sights. They demanded that Gluck provide them with the Santa Claus Association's books and receipts. The Santa Claus man resisted, but eventually was compelled to open up his workshop to city auditors. Ho, ho, oh no. (laughs) They've... They found tens of thousands of dollars left unaccounted for. And bear in mind, this is 1911 money. That's like three bajillion. It's, that's wow. It is, my yeah. God. Uh, they found tens of thousands of dollars left unaccounted for. A raft of dubious fundraising practi- practices and no oversight of Gluck or his handling of any of the association's funds. So this entire time... Like, I, yeah, tens upon tens of thousands of yieldy dollars had just been entering this business. No one thought to check in. There was no one else responsible for the money. It just went to Gluck and it was used. And because I guess, I think throughout this time, he did at least actually like respond to Christmas letters. Mm. Uh, he did actually partner up people with, uh, with donators and children did get gifts. So it wasn't totally crappy but he did also siphon money while doing a charitable act which is a beautiful yeah. bastard thing to do uh oh god what was it there was, there was a little tidbit that i've deleted what was it maybe it'll come back to me by the time i finished the last paragraph <laughs> um though the lack of documentation made it hard to convict gluck of a crime oh. that's the secret to doing a crime just don't write any of it down yeah. and then there's, there's no proof uh 
Caller found enough evidence to convince the postal inspector that Gluck could no longer be trusted with uh, children's wishes. Oh, uh, oh, oh the great! It, this is the saddest thing of all. Not yeah. not being sent to jail, having your Santa <laughs> robe taken off you. Like the reversal of a Christmas film's happy ending, the postman came to the Santa Claus Association's office and removed Santa's mail, no. stripping Gluck of his prized letters. Oh yeah, this is like he was like genuinely like he had like aspirations of doing something great and worthwhile with his life, but then just money just disappeared. Um, and so yeah, a lot of fingers are pointed at him, and he ruined the spirit of Christmas forever. <sighs> what an oh, ass, you bastards! He'll be on oh, the naughty yeah. list. On the naughty list. So yeah, that remembered. It. So part of like the filtering process for the letters involved people reading all the letters. And people would like categorize the letters into different areas. Like some of them would just maybe get like a letter response. But if there was like a really sad tale or like a really sad letter of a child who's clearly not having a merry time at all, um, mm. they would um, make sure those children got something extra nice and would also uh, forward on the details of the child onto local uh, authorities and protection things ah. to ensure that the children, you know, were maybe checked in on um, so they mm. weren't left totally stranded. So, yeah, a polarizing one. Good part bastard, part 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 real life Santa Claus, but I don't know when you start talking about big plans to build a, a Santa Claus building in the middle of Manhattan, what is probably the most <laughs> expensive area to build on. Maybe maybe the power's getting to his head a bit. Yeah, yeah maybe maybe. maybe. Um, well, well, that was amazing. Thank you, Mikey. I've never heard of that man before. No, what a I've, dick. What a dick. Never thought about how what like if anything ever got done to the Christmas letters. Maybe not these yeah. days, but definitely in the old days. Mm. Definitely to, in the old days. days. Steal your money. Yeah. <laughs> Peter, do you have a listener submitted thing? I do. It was submitted by Will Malley via Twitter. Um, and it's according to the Manchester Evening News.co.uk, written by Chris Slater, senior reporter. Whoa. Um this is uh, no, I don't want you to Send me notifications. Stop. Oh, please. What the hell is that? Locals fume over pathetic Christmas tree compared to Leaning Tower of Pisa. <laughs> Subheading. The threadbare decorated spruce on a major roundabout has gained a lot of attention. Most most <laughs> it not favourable. Most senior it reporter. Not favourable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, here we go. Council chiefs have responded after residents in a leafy Stockport suburb hit out at a pathetic and unbelievably bad decorated tree which has appeared in the middle of a major roundabout. The tree, which has had fairy lights draped around it, has been planted on the grassed area at the roundabout where Bridge Lane meets Bramall Lane South. However, those living in the area have mocked it online, labelling it spindly and so wonky... Just the word wonky is in quotes there. So wonky, it resembles the Leaning Tower of Pisa. The council says it is not the area's main Christmas tree and wasn't even planted as a Christmas tree, but that the decision was taken to decorate it. In a post on the Next Door social media app, Dave oh, Booth said next to a... said. Dave Booth said, next to a photo of the tree, or I think it's just a comment, uh, SMBC have really excelled this year with the tree on the Bridge Lane roundabout. The plus point is it is a live tree. Um, <laughs> I like the sarcasm there. They've really excelled. Um, there were dozens of replies from others who felt it was a poor representation of the area. What the hell is that? Elaine Bailey said. How pathetic. SMBC should be ashamed, Val R said. Um, Terence Burgess or Burgess said blink and you'd blink and you'd miss it uh, Sue Marshall said locals and visitors will at least experience some Christmas cheer as they stifle a smile or laugh out loud in all caps <laughs> uh, could cause an accident or two she says um, Diana Rourke said unbelievably bad and Hillary Dunn said I saw this earlier today. It is absolutely awful. All other Christmas trees around the Stockport area are much better. Mike Forshaw... This is basically just the entire comments <laughs> thread written into it. It is, yeah. They've just oh copied and pasted God. it in. 
Uh, just driven past it, and yeah, it looks more ridiculous than this post suggested. Right near the road as well. Why not? Why not more central on the grass? Did it really require three council vans, six blokes, and two suits to organise that? <laughs> uh, let me send you a wide photo. I mean, it is very rubbish. Oh yeah, show us. Very excited. Here it is. It's got three like rubbish council fences around. <laughs> oh five. no! <laughs> Isn't it bad? Oh, it's been like cordoned little, off. Yeah, there's a little like wrapped up thing next to it. I don't even know what that is. Oh um, my God. It's not oh good. Dear. It's very thin, isn't it? It's so thin. Um, it's, it's like it, I don't think it'd be so offensive if the gates weren't there. I mean, yes, it's sad, but yeah. does the gates add a certain layer of council uh, official, well, not offic- officiality to it? It's just like, yeah, this yeah. Is, we, have, we are legally obliged to put a thing around this thing. Here you go. Yep. Good yeah. God. Um, I love it. It brings more of a smile than any other I can remember seeing. And next year, it will be even wonkier. <laughs> someone, has, someone has decided. That's just their thoughts. Uh, it's a tourist attraction, the Leaning Tree of Bramall. Um, I mean, the uh, the article continues really just with more comments and then a photo of the one from Bramall Town Centre, which also has ugly council-like fence fence bits around it did they do this to all public christmas trees it's oh maybe hideous. yeah because people could just push it over or you know yeah, it'll fall on them or so. something we'll never get past those metal gates no <laughs> impenetrable yeah. uh oh i think we've got a statement here from the council though okay uh, the newly uh Okay, Stockport Council have now spoken out about the criticism. They say the living Serbian spruce tree was not planted as a Christmas tree, but was simply intended to replace a dead tree. However, they say that the community were keen to have lights on it. Uh, <laughs> however, they insist once it, once it's grown and filled out that that it will benefit the area for future generations on a on a roundabout. Yeah. <laughs> a town hall spokesperson said the main Christmas tree in Bramall is a tree provided each year in the centre of the village next to the church. The newly planted tree at Bramall Roundabout is a living Pichia Omerica Serbian spruce tree. It replaces a dead tree that's not been intentionally planted as a Christmas tree, but the community were keen to have lights on it. Just repeating what the article just said. The tree will be there for many years to come and was chosen as an upright variety to minimise the impact on road users. Um, as the tree continues to grow over the years, it will fill out and benefit the area for future generations. Uh, it will be there for many years to come, um, and and uh, it will provide an essential habitat for wildlife. That's that's it. The rest of the article is just padding. It can it goes on and on and on and on. Somehow it goes. No, on. nothing more to say. Um, but yeah, it certainly is ugly. This tree. It is. And it's, you know what? It's got, Fair enough if they just planted it as a tree and people yeah, insisted it have lights, lights on. on and it. it was like, yeah, that looks yeah, rubbish. Yeah. It's like, well, hang on. It wasn't even meant to be a fucking Christmas tree. You are, you already got one. Yeah. yeah. It's got a certain charm to it. I, I like yeah. crap Christmas things. There's a house along the road from me um, <laughs> where, like, there must be about 100 bits of Christmas, like, tat plastered mm, all no. over it but with no discernible theme. It's just like they went to B&M Bargains and cleared out their entire <laughs> stock and it's just, like... I shit you not, like every inch of like their front garden is covered. Like you can barely get in there. Like it's it's stunning and I love it. It's disgusting, it's gaudy, <laughs> and it's just terrible. And it's my kind of Christmas, damn it. There's a, a house on my estate. Uh it's not really visible from our house, fortunately. But uh, I may have mentioned this at Halloween as like uh, Halloween because they did the same thing, but they decorate their house with a projector. So at night, at Halloween, they had like ghosts and pumpkins, like just sort of like the DVD logo just bouncing around the front of their house on a projector. And now they've got it so that there's like snow falling in front of their house. But it's wow. the, this massive projector that covers the entirety of the front side of their house. And it's like the people who live across from them must be a bit pissed off about it. I would be <laughs> if that was on at night. Um, How much is that energy bill costing? That's what I want to well, know. Yeah, Loads I of people know. go crazy with their Christmas lights. It's not, yeah. You don't need to do that. Don't you can't put that. a price on spreading Christmas cheer, man. You can. Yes. It's well, you a two hundred pound energy bill. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Well, thank you, Peter. You're very welcome. Thank you. It's Peter. now time for my Christmas thing. Um, mm. I've done this before. Your Chris Thingle. Oh, oh bloody hell! There he is. 
Right there he the fucking end. is. He showed, he showed up to work today. Fuck me. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> uh, someone's had their blobby biscuits. Sorry. My, <laughs> <laughs> my Chris Thingle uh, is a follow-up to a previous Chris Thingle where I ran through some festive traditions from around the world and you had to guess which ones were real and which ones were false. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we continue that trend this year. I am going to read you the name of it and then I'm going to give you a bit of a description and uh, one by one you can guess if it's real or false. Are you guys okay. on board with that? Yeah. yeah. Brilliant. First up is the Icelandic Yule Cat. The Yule Cat, also called the Jóla Kotur, and Christmas Cat is a huge and vicious cat from Icelandic Christmas folklore that is said to lurk in the snowy countryside during the Christmas season and eat people that do not receive any new clothing to wear before Christmas Eve. Oh. <laughs> you, you do you want us to say yes or no uh, like with each as, as we go through, or are you going to read them all? As we go through. As we go okay. through. What I do you think, think of the sounds... Icelandic Yule Cat? I think it sounds plausible. I think um, if it's not real, then you've done a good job of making up some fake Icelandic uh, in there. Mm. <laughs> but you could have just used Google Translate for Yule Cat. Um, so, mm. you know, could could be fake. I'm going to say real, though. Could you reread, like, the last line where it says it eats children who weren't given any warm clothes for winter? It is said to lurk in the snowy countryside during the Christmas season and eat people that do not receive any new clothing to wear before Christmas Eve. So if if no one else buys you Christmas clothes, <laughs> this this cat comes and gobbles you up. It'd be a good way to take someone out, wouldn't it? Just like tell all your mates, don't buy, don't buy him clothes. Christmas don't clothes buy him clothes. <laughs> the Yule oh, I I want to say true. I'm trying to like figure out. What, maybe it's like in the spirit of like encouraging people to give and be generous to people they um, love. So yeah, yeah. So if you don't want your friend to be eaten by a cat, then give him a pair of gloves or something. So yeah, I'm I'm gonna say true as well. It is true. Mm. Yola coat. Hang on. In other versions of the story, the cat just eats the food of people without new co- uh, new clothes. Yola koturin. I'm not pronouncing that right. Is closely associated with other figures from Icelandic folklore as the house pet of the ogress Grilla and her sons, the Yule lads. The Remember Yule the Yule lads? lads? Oh my god! <laughs> they eat the everyone's same food house. as well, don't they? They do, they bastards. Uh, so that's the first one. <laughs> Next one is. Nought from Norway is called Hide Your Broom. The Norwegians <laughs> believe that Christmas Eve coincides with the arrival of evil spirits and witches. It is only logical, then, that Norwegian householders hide all their brooms before they go to sleep. Huh. <laughs> mm. I like it. Um, does it sound like it could that you could have made it up? I'm going to guess that it's not real, but it's very believable. I yeah I, I I say it's so believable that I am in fact going to believe. It. I just mm-hmm. imagine it being quite a cute little bedtime ritual. Like, oh everybody, let's find the brooms. Hide the brooms. Put them, Hide the brooms. Put them in the broom cupboard. <laughs> I just feel like wouldn't the witch have its own broom? You know, that's my great point. It's a yeah. great point. It is actually BYOB. <laughs> BYOB. Well, you should because it's real. It's a real tradition. Ah. Uh, the write-up continues. After all, nothing spoils Christmas quicker than finding your broom in broken pieces at the foot of a tree, oh. trashed by some joy-riding witch. Oh, no. Oh, my God. So that's a real one. Ah. Uh, next story is the Caracas Skater Boys. Oh. In the week they leading said, up to... They see you later, boys. They did, yeah. yeah. In the week leading up to Christmas, Venezuelans attend a daily church service... In the capital, Car- Caracas, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, it is customary to travel to the church service on roller skates. Mm-hmm. <laughs> is that real or not? Oh, it seems dangerous in the winter. Um, mm. Venezuela, though, it's got to be pretty pretty. Could be quite warm, yeah. Yeah, yeah true. Oh, yeah, that's a very good point, yeah. Mm. What do you think, Mikey? I'm, I want to say... True. I don't like. I imagine like everyone getting dressed up in little lights and Santa outfits, and like there's a there's a whole like uh, cavalry of people skating their way towards church. I quite like the idea of it, so I want it to be real. Um, I'm gonna say fake. It's another real one. <gasps> another. The, the daily church service is called Misa de Iguinaldo, early morning mass, and it's so wide, so widespread is the practice of going on your roller skates that many roads in the capital are closed until 8 a.m. to provide Christmas worshippers with a safe passage. Ah. Wow. How about that? Big fan. Real one. Next one 
is Taiwanese chocolate grandma. <laughs> in Taiwan, why are you laughing? In Taiwan, it's customary for children to wrap their grandparents in golden foil to be unwrapped before the dawn of Christmas Day, much like a piece of festive confectionery. Inspired by a joke entry in the so-called comedy podcast Poddy It's Three Years Prior, <laughs> local residents saw this as a call to action and has thus far resulted in thousands of delighted children and at least 300 grandparent asphyxiation-related fatalities. Um, could be real, you know. We are, we do have a big Taiwanese following. They love us in Taiwan. Do you not remember that form that got sent through uh, that told us not to talk about this um, because they wanted to to separate the art from the artist and make this their thing? So maybe we're finally breaking that NDA. Breaking um, the rules here by bringing it. I I think it's time. It's it's been long enough. We're allowed to take credit for this wonderful Christmas tradition we, well, you invented, Ben. I did. I I would say... Yes, 100% yeah. real. It's real, that one. Shadow that one's real. That is real. That is absolutely real. And don't ask anyone in Taiwan about it because they yeah. won't tell, because it's a secret tradition. So there we are. Next up, Guatemalan cleaning fixation. In Guatemala, cleanliness really is next to godliness. Locals believe that the devil and other evil spirits lurk in the dark, dirty corners of your home. Therefore, they spend the week before Christmas sweeping up, collecting rubbish, and then piling everything in a huge heap outside. Is it real or is it not? Mm. Guatemala cleaning. Yeah, all right. I'll say that's real. I I want to say real as well. Again, just because it it seems like a good excuse to get the kids to tidy up. Yeah, <laughs> you're not going to get any presents if you don't pick up your bloody toys. Well, good thing, guys, because it's it is real. Uh, the write-up continues. Finally, an effigy of the devil is placed on top of the rubbish, and the whole thing is set on fire. Which doesn't well, sound I was very. Thinking that, yeah, it would be sound very, very for good for the environment to burn all that rubbish. It's called no. La Quema del Diablo. I've mispronounced that, or the burning of the devil. The idea for Guatemalans is to burn all the bad from the previous year and start a new year from out of the ashes. Mm. So that yeah. is real. And finally. I have the Portuguese Sixth Sense Feast. During Consoda, the traditional Christmas feast in Portugal, families sometimes set extra places at the dining table for deceased relatives. Ah. I've heard of people doing that in... I don't know specifically that it is a Christmas tradition, but I think that is something that is done in various countries at various times or, you know, um, maybe just in the immediate aftermath of a death or something, but... It's definitely some kind of uh, tradition somewhere for some reason. Is it a Christmas Portuguese thing? I'm going to say, yeah, it is. I'm going to say, no, it's not. Mm. Ah, Well, Peter has sussed onto the trend because all of these are real today, especially Taiwanese chocolate grandma. We're on a learning adventure. It's thought that the practice will ensure good fortunes for the household. In some areas, crumbs are left on the hearth as well. And you thought feeding all your relatives was hard enough. (laughs) (laughs) So says the write-up. And that is my thing. Some strange, uh, well, I mean, strange to us, uh, Christmas traditions from around the world. You didn't include um, West Yorkshire 50p game. Why wasn't I didn't. That? You know what? Next time I will. How's that? Right. I promise, yeah. if I remember, which I won't. When when Caganeers are a, tr- a Christmas tradition, if, if, in case you've never heard the episode, listeners at home, which is where, for your nativity scene, I can't remember the country, uh, Spain, maybe? We had a couple of people, if this is the pooing one, we had a couple of people send this <gasps> to us as things, but oh, we've we definitely covered it before. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just it just when when that exists as like a bona fide Christmas tradition to get buy a little pooping figure to put in your nativity, it feels like any Christmas tradition could be possible. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Dreams can come true. I'm going to scroll down and see if I can uh, I can find it. I can't. I can't find it. It's not showing up in our mentions now. It doesn't matter. But it is from. It's a real. It's a real tradition, and we have seen it. So thank you for sending that. And thus concludes all the things for this festive episode. Aww of Podiots. Uh, Thank you so much for listening and watching. Please don't go anywhere yet because we've got a few things to plug first and we'd appreciate if you stuck around for that. You don't have to, but we'd like it if you did. Uh, Mikey, I believe there's some kind of shop. 
You are darn tooting. I think it's twice now you've asked me to talk about the shop and I've just like had a burp brewing each time. But I've contained it <laughs> because but I can't contain my excitement about our shop. Hell yes. If you, if you head to vidiotsofficial.com and click on the lovely enticing little shop button, you'll find all of your favorite bits of merch from over the years and also a new collection of goodies, including the brand spanking, marvelous, glorious gravy buyers, gravy buyers. A lovely T-shirt. Also, that is a similar uh, a, a, a design. A des- the design. There we go. English. Oh, I'm falling apart now. You see, you this is it. what happens. New merch comes on, and my brain can't cope. It's also exciting. A lovely corduroy cap available in a whole host of colours with an embroidered gravy bra- gravy bay design over it. Uh, that's not all, as we have one more non gravy bay related bit of merch, which is our. Feld Hughes Fun Foods Podiat's Meat Facery T-shirt. We've ripped off a real company's logo <laughs> with proper lawyers. Allegedly. Um, <laughs> alleg- allegedly. There's no proof. This is Podiat's, not videos. Um, so, yeah, go check it out while you can. It's lovely. And it's even got a little back print as well. Mm. So you can show off your, your Podiat's fandom to people ahead and behind you. And behind Absolutely. Uh, you can follow us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, all.com forward slash Vidiot's Official. Uh, Discord is vidiotsofficial.com forward slash Discord. Very big thank you to Tommy and Fleckers for modding us over there. We appreciate you guys thank and you very all you do. Uh, Twitch.tv forward slash Vidiot's Official is where we stream when we live stream. We obviously just did that charity stream the other week. Thank you again, everybody who was so generous during that. Uh, Podiots.com. Donate there, three pounds or more, and get a shout out at the beginning and the end of the podcast on your join pod squad. Why not sign up now for the first episode of 2024? We believe in you. You can do it. Uh, Mikey, do you want to kick us off again? We begin with Mr. Macca. Caroline, please, I will change the generous good stegosaurus i'm ben i'm peter and i'm michael stomach krampus oh that well i should have said that was my favorite one it's i think good. that's very yeah, good. good i like, I like, it. It. I like it, it a lot michael felcher bum slurper stimulated crocodile clits specky becky michael comes on nuts the generous you know it's all about dacoom put your christmasy into it kirby herdy herpy derpy and human semen festive bake. Mm. Festive boo cake, if you will. Yes, oh, very good. There you go. There you go. We've also got D's nuts roasting on an open fire. Mm-hmm. A holly jolly Mr. Black. The cum was a bit much for me. Step into fudge bucket. Don Echo 7. Mr. Blobby has a throbby. CD, another CD. Uh, CD's nuts. Wallace and Grom nuts. Merry Christ nuts. Podiots presents presents. Prince Beefcake, who was very generous, thank you. Uh, Chris Madiots, Stephen Skodes, and Flat Armed Maud. And finally, we have Noel gave me blob spiders. Stephen Skodes, Lord Fudge Bucket of Itch, Doctor Goblin, Joan Christmas, Papugas, Tiny Head Nice Pump, Finn Tristam, come at the pog. Torso Evans, extra 50s worth of Crimbo, who was very, very generous. Brian Butterfield, who was also very generous. Naked Naturist Harry Gooch and Chega Slovakia. And thus concludes your final pod squad of 2023. Thank you so much to everybody. And once again, podiots.com. Uh, three pounds or more to get a shout out at the beginning and the end of the show and join Pod Squad. Uh, oh. Peter, was there anything that was released on Vidiots five years ago this week? There was. You know what? I'm going to take us to the end of the year. As we've come to the end of a year of Podiots, I'll go from the previous episode of Podiots right through to the end of the 2018 run. So it began, funnily enough, with Podiots episode 24, Merry Chrysler. Um, Worst games ever, Spice World. Podiots episode 25, Clumpy Grid. That's how sporadic our releases were at this point. It's (laughs) it's two episodes back to back. Uh, Vidiot's live Twitch stream Spire Reignited trilogy. Post some tat number 39, the finale. Um, the Vidiot's Tell Your Friends montage with all of the Tell Your Friends we didn't get around Aww. to using. Yeah. Worst Games Ever, Mr. Bean. And then Worst Games Ever, Santa Claus Saves the Earth. What's in the case? Portal Goblin face reveal with Dave, Dave Benson. And that actually is it. That's... 
Wow. Everything that came the out. end of the story. And next year, when I ask you that question, it will be six years. Yeah. Oh, um, God. That's, <laughs> I, I, I saw this every year, but yeah, that's... We're grim. so old. Mikey, you're going to turn 30 soon. Uh, that's upsetting, yeah, isn't it? I'm starting to feel it. Um, mm. And it's only going to get worse. Join us as we age. Slowly. It literally slowly. only gets worse from here, which is, <laughs> which is fantastic. Uh, Mikey, whereabouts are you on the internet? At Parrot Boy on Twitter and Instagram is the best place to keep up with what I'm up to. Wonderful. And uh, Peter, where are we? You can find myself at that Peter Austin on Twitter and Ben at confused underscore dude on Twitter. Uh, but you can find both of us making silly video game related videos at Team Triple Jump on YouTube and on Twitch as well. And we're on Twitter and Facebook. So find us everywhere at Team Triple Jump. Fantastic. And finally, why not leave us a five star review on your platform of choice? It helps with something to do with Al Gore's rhythms or something. If you're not in a position or even if you are in a position to support us via Pod Squad or buy merch or what have you, this is the Christmas present that we would like from you. Yeah. It takes no time at all and it's free to do it. And we'd really appreciate it. You can so. also rate Gravy Bay on Google mm, Maps five can. stars if you like. Go and find Gravy risk. Bay. Go do it. Uh, lovely. Do we have a final question to see us off into 2024? What do you want for Christmas this oh. year? <laughs> lovely. <laughs> Look after yourselves, everybody. Uh, stay safe, stay warm, stay happy, whatever it is you celebrate. Have a very happy new year, and we will see you next year. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.